About 40% of Americans will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lives, so it's likely you or someone you know has been touched by the disease. This year, 2 million people will be diagnosed with cancer in the U.S., and those numbers are increasing each and every day. Joining us live to discuss how to navigate a cancer diagnosis is five-time cancer survivor Bill Potts. Bill, thank you so much for your time. Five go-arounds. Yeah, Zach, uh, thank you for having me. Even hearing the words five-time cancer survivor uh, takes my breath away. It's been a remarkable journey. It started off in 2002 when I was living in Houston, diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Mm -hmm. Then in 2008, was diagnosed with stage three lymphoma. In 2014, lymphoma again. 2019, lymphoma again. And then in 2020, I got the double whammy. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and then lymphoma. So currently I'm my in remission goodness. with my fourth time with lymphoma, still dealing with prostate cancer, but uh, I am really grateful to be here to be able to share this story. And interestingly, Zach, uh, there's a lot of good that's come from uh, this battle. Uh, I, I, uh -huh. I wrote a book uh, to turn my pain into purpose at the uh -huh. advice of a pastor after I'd had an emotional breakdown in September of 2020 after my lymphoma surgery. and. I decided I was gonna give up the fight and she told me not to give it up and I needed to fight for my family, for my friends, for my meaningful work mm -hmm. and to make God proud. So she leans in at the end of this conversation, Zach, and she says, Bill, now, now I need you to write that book to turn your pain into purpose. And so I did. That book's like what to expect when you're expecting. It's called Up for the Fight and it's changing and, and saving some lives for people going through the journey. So it's remarkable. I have goosebumps as you're as you're speaking about your journey and um, and and thinking back to 2020. That's pandemic time. So on top of this diagnosis, that isolation that came with that time period is, is so very unique. Yeah, it was a pretty challenging time for me. Uh, I had to really lean into my family, lean into my faith my chance of surviving COVID as I had a cancer of the immune system and was going through chemotherapy was only 45%. So I had to be ultra cautious and my immune system didn't really reboot uh, for a couple years. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time alone, but uh, I've adapted, spent a lot of that time writing a book. So uh, it's all good. Yeah, uh, I know you mentioned you're in remission. So congratulations to that. That's, that's a <laughs> huge you. win. Um, talk to us about where you're at um, you know, mentally right now, what, what you're doing with your days and, and, and what's, what's your, what's your future looking like? Yeah, I'm really fortunate that that conversation with the pastor changed the direction of my life. So I work with a lot of cancer patients, uh, mm -hmm. uh that are very available to, 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 to reached out to me, you know, through the book. And so my purpose now has really become helping others in mm -hmm. their cancer journey. So it really is a purpose that I never would have expected and is one of the best things that's come out of my cancer battle. Yeah. What's your message to to folks who are, you know, in the fight of their lives right now to to them and to their caregivers, to to their support system? Is there anything that you experienced throughout your 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 journey that really resonated with you that you want to share with with people today? Yeah, I think one of the one of the biggest things that I've learned through my journey is is to really get some outside support. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. I had a full time job. My wife had a full time job. I had three young kids, you know, going through this with me, and I leaned too much on them for that support. I didn't even know that you know outside uh, paid support was available. And as a cancer patient, I mean, it's a full time job to to manage the yeah. cancer journey. You need people with you during appointments. You for yeah. sure need somebody with you and during treatments. You need somebody a lot of times with you to be at home, to keep an eye on you, to, to cook, to clean, to get you to appointments, even to do simple things like do a safety audit to prevent you from doing what happened to me. I fell down the stairs twice yeah. uh, during my last round of chemotherapy. So I wish I had known about home care mm -hmm. and I wish I'd found somebody that could support me because the amount of stress I put on my family was 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 immense. Yeah. Well, you you look amazing, you sound amazing. 
Uh, I'm so thankful that you were able to join us today and to have this conversation. I'm also thankful that you're that you feel um, compelled and propelled to to use your journey and, and to reach out to others. I know these journeys are very unique to to individuals, and not everyone who has these experiences um, are comfortable with with sharing their stories and and in and, and hopes of helping others. So what you're doing is really, really incredible work. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's now it's now my purpose to help others. Mm -hmm. And just in the home care side, you know, I wish I'd known about uh, Synergy Home Care, which is uh, a company that is one of the biggest in this. And I've gotten to know them uh, really well and, and, and they're fantastic. And if I could make one change, and I will have a cancer number seven, because unfortunately my cancer is incurable, I will hire them mm -hmm. to help me with all those things that, that I need help on, so I don't put the pressure on my family. Yeah. And uh, I'm lucky enough to you know now be able to guide them as to how they help their cancer patients. You know, I actually helped them write the guide yeah. on, 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 uh, for families of, of cancer patients uh, so that they can coach others in their journey because it really takes a lot of knowledge and I'm just lucky I have that experience that I can help others. Yeah, and it takes a lot of patience too. Uh, Bill, with that guidance, what's what's the first step that you, you want folks to, to do? I know, you know, pausing, taking a moment to, to, to breathe, but what do you want them to do from, from that point on? Yeah, get a second opinion, okay. uh, number one. Uh, number two, uh, go, to a National Cancer Institute, a designated cancer center, of which Houston has the best in the world at yeah. MD Anderson. So people in Houston should take advantage of that. Uh, you know, number three is to button up uh, the business of cancer, which means legal and financial documents uh, in case it doesn't go as hoped. Mm -hmm. That's super important. Uh, number four, I you have to take care of your physical and mental health. I mean, I'm a fanatic about exercise. I'm a fanatic about a clean diet. I also do meditation, deep breathing, a lot of praying to take care of the mental health. That's all important. But probably the most important uh, thing that a patient can do and the family can do is to own the journey. It's counterintuitive to many, Zach, that the patient owns the journey. Uh -huh. not the doctor, uh -huh. but you do. So you need to be involved in every step of that journey from where you go to the second opinions, to being prepared at appointments, to knowing the type of treatments you're gonna get, to knowing the side effects that you get, to managing every aspect of yeah. your journey. That's up to the patient. It's their life, so they need to own it. And when you treat it that way, uh -huh. and you treat it like a business, it really helps you and treat it like a job. It really helps you uh -huh. to be able to manage the journey mentally taking that approach, having that control. You are an inspiration, sir. Bill mm -hmm. Potts, thank you so much for joining us this morning.